Hey, week 13 in the National Football League is coming right up. Dolphins taking on the Commanders. I'll give you my score prediction at the end of today's video, but I want to know yours right off the jump. Let me know in the comments, and let's preview this Dolphins-Commanders matchup next on Dolphins Today. Welcome into this edition of Dolphins Today. And folks, lo and behold, it's another week where the Dolphins are heavy favorites on paper, yet being on the road. They'll hit the road to Maryland to take on the Washington Commanders. And as you look at this matchup, obviously the records jump out to you. The Dolphins at 8-3, and three, first place, comfortably for now, first place in the AFC East. And the Commanders, well, they're in a little bit of a downfall. 4-8, they've lost their last three offensively Washington hasn't been too bad but that defense is not good folks you see the 29.2 points per game yeah that's last last dead last in the National Football League Miami a nine and a half point favorite the over under set at 50 and a half and as you look at this Washington Commanders team you know we always like to take a deep dive see exactly where they're at I mentioned They've lost three in a row, and that led to the firing of defensive coordinator Jack Del Rio and the defensive backs coach Brent Vesselmeyer after the 45-10 loss on Thanksgiving to the Cowboys. So not a very happy Thanksgiving for Jack Del Rio. A bummer there. So Ron Rivera takes over calling the defensive plays. But like I said, offensively it hasn't been that bad. Sam Howell leads the National Football League in passing yards with over 3,300 passing yards, which is pretty impressive. And as I mentioned, Ron Rivera, yeah, he's calling the defense now, but also might be coaching for his job. A lot of people within the Washington Commanders organization have that belief that, uh, yeah, he might be on his way out. And I said the defense is bad. It's really bad. So bad we had to make a caps, you know, an all-caps graphic of exactly how bad they are. League worst, 29.2 points allowed. And, you know, some of this, you saw the writing on the wall a little bit when they traded Chase Young and Montez Sweat at the deadline. Two playmakers that, by losing them, obviously the defense isn't going to get any better. And, as I mentioned, the three-game losing streak, the defense has been really, really bad. So what does that mean for this Dolphins offense? Well, you know, like I say, sometimes I say until I turn blue in the face, this is a chance for the Dolphins offense to get back to what they were doing earlier in the season. And yes, I guess that sounds a little bit great, greedy. You know, get back to scoring 70 points a game, right? That would be nice. But you want to see them clean it up on the offensive side of things. And this, I'd, again, it's the National Football League any given Sunday. That's a cliche. Let's call it how it is. The Dolphins should exploit this Washington defense in all aspects. Running the ball, passing the ball, the short passing game, the long passing game, this, that, and the other. I look for this to be a coming out party for the Miami Dolphins to get back to what they were doing earlier in the season. And you notice my hair is a little bit grayer today. That's because I've been watching Tua turn the ball over too much. Week in, week out, the last couple of weeks, it has not been great. We know Tua is capable of playing at an MVP caliber level. We just have not seen it as of late. And for that reason, I'm really, maybe I'm getting out of myself and calling my shot, but I want to see this as a coming out party for Tua and the Dolphins offense. We saw the running game get back to what they're capable of against the Jets. Raheem Mostert really controlled that second half for Miami, and I would love to see more of the same in the running game and combined with a clean passing game on Sunday against the Commanders. So, where are you at right now with this Miami Dolphins offense? Do you have confidence in them to clean up the turnovers? Or are you like me and maybe you got to see it to believe it to get back to that offensive prowess that they showed earlier in the season? Scale it for me in the comments. Scale it 1 through 10. Now, coming up, we're going to talk about this Dolphins defense and how they've been able to turn it around and really playing at a high level under first year defensive coordinator Vic Fangio. But first, I got to give a huge shout out to a brand new sponsor, and that is Factor. Folks, listen up and listen good, because the holiday season is right around the corner, and you're probably looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. And let me tell you, Factor America it, Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service that can help you fuel up 
for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef prepared, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and you'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to do. So if you're like me, you're probably too busy with holiday plans. You're too busy to cook. But you want to make sure you're eating well, right? With Factor, you skip the extra trip to the grocery store. You skip the chopping, preparing, cleaning up, meal prepping, all of that, while you're still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. Let me say that again. They're ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is eat and enjoy. So don't waste any more time. Head to factormeals.com slash finschat50 and use code finschat50 to get, get this, 50% off. That's right, 50% off. That's code finschat50 at factormeals.com slash finschat50 to get 50% off. And you know we love, about, we love you, we care about you, so we're putting that link in the chat as well. We'll put it in the comments and the description of this video. But one more time, it's factormeals.com slash finschat50 for 50% off. Now, I mentioned how good this defense has been, but let me break it down a little bit further because the first couple of weeks, not pretty. There was people, and maybe I was a little bit guilty of this too, people online calling Vic Fangio's a bum. We don't know what the heck he's doing. But take a look at this from the Dolphins communications guy, Brett Freichen. Great follow on Twitter as well if you haven't already, but he's got a lot of good info here. Miami Dolphins defense has been one of the league's best since week five, and here's how they've improved from the first quarter of the season. So as we pull this graphic up, you're going to see week five through 12 in several statistical categories, the Dolphins defense is ranked first. And that includes total defense, which is obviously a pretty important statistical category to be ranked number one in. And in the first four weeks of the season, they were 26 in this. The yards per play, also a pretty important category. They are also first in that in weeks five through 12. Rushing defense second, first downs allowed second, and so on and so forth. Point being, since week five, this Dolphins defense has come into their own and really, in a lot of senses, turned into the strength of this Dolphins team. And there's a lot of factors associated with that. But I've said it once, I'll say it again. I think a large majority has to do with the return of Jalen Ramsey. Since he made his Dolphins debut in week number eight, the Dolphins have forced seven turnovers in four games. And in their previous seven games, they had forced just six turnovers. So obviously, they haven't all been by Jalen Ramsey, but he's had three interceptions since his return and been a huge factor in improving this Dolphins defense. They're also getting quality play out of a number of secondary guys, including Javon Holland. Obviously, he had the 99-yard interception return against the Jets. And Ramsey really has just elevated each and every member of the defense's level of play. So I've given you my opinion on why I think the Dolphins' defense has gotten a lot better, but what say you? Let me know in the comments what do you attribute to the Dolphins' improvement on defense. Now, it's not like this Washington Commanders team is someone you can just show up against and it'll be a walk in the park. Like we mentioned, Sam Howell leading the NFL in passing yards. Brian Robinson is a weapon out of the backfield. And Terry McLaren as a very good wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins. He is in the upper echelon in the top 20 of receiving yards as well. So with that said, let's get into our keys to victory for this Miami Dolphins team taking on the Washington Commanders. It starts with utilizing a strength of the team, and that is the offense, to expose that putrid Washington defense. Now, Jack Sperry does a great job with our Washington Commanders channel here at Chat Sports. I asked him, what is there to know about the Washington Commanders? And he said the defense is terrible. It stinks. And here's a look at how bad exactly they've been in their last three games. 41 points against the Cowboys. 31 points against the Giants. The lowly Giants scored 31 points in them and 29 against the Seahawks. So there's opportunities there to be had for this Dolphins offense. And that gets me feeling a little bit greedy. Knowing that the opportunities are there for the taking, I want to see some breakout games from the Aqua and Orange. So I'll tell you mine, but first, let me know in the comments who you want to see have a breakout game. And maybe a coming out party on the offensive end 
against a putrid Washington Commanders defense. For me, it's Jalen Waddell. He's been so close a couple of times of really having that breakout game. He's been over 100 yards a couple of times this season, and it's no disrespect to him. I think a lot of the times Tyreek Hill steals the spotlight, and rightfully so. He's on pace for over 2,000 yards receiving, Tyreek Hill that is, but Jalen Waddell's stats are no slump either. Look at this, 44 receptions, 577 yards, three touchdowns, and a 13 average for his yards per catch. So obviously Jalen Waddell is a guy that can get it done as a wide receiver in the league. He's among the elite, and I want to see him have a breakout game. It feels like his time is coming. It's right around the corner. Now, on the offensive side, I want to see the Dolphins get back to what they're capable of doing. That offensive prowess, that team that was generational, the greatest show on surf, whatever you want to call it. We know this Dolphins team is capable, and this is the week I want to see it on full display. So run game, passing game, and maybe I do sound greedy and sound selfish, and that's why we've got Joe Shad here to remind me how good this Dolphins offense still has been, even though they've taken a couple of steps back in recent weeks. So check out the bottom part of this tweet. From weeks 1 through 12, yeah, the Dolphins offense is ranked number one in the NFL in total offense and number one in most yards per play. So quit your yapping and quit your complaining, Jake. The Dolphins offense still has been really good, but we know they can be better than what they've shown against the Jets, what they showed against the Raiders, and what they showed against the Chiefs and Patriots in their last four games. So, yes, I'm greedy. I'm selfish. I want to see Tua Tungavello and the offense get it done. Now, defensively, we mentioned Sam Howell leads the NFL in passing yards. This is an opportunity for the Dolphins' defensive line and some new faces on that defensive line, obviously with the addition of Jason Pierre-Paul. Not sure if he'll play on Sunday yet, but this Dolphins' defensive line needs to continue to get after the quarterback, and that's been an area they really have taken several strides for. Check this out. Six different Dolphins have four-plus sacks. No other NFL team has more than four different players with six plus sacks. So really impressive there. I'll go ahead and name them. You've got Zach Sealer with four sacks, Emmanuel Agba with four sacks. Obviously Jalen Phillips, he went down. He had six and a half sacks and Bradley Chubb with six sacks as well on the season. So those guys are getting it done and you want to see them continue to get it done for the Miami Dolphins. And this is an opportunity to do so against the Washington Commanders. And Sam Howell, very mobile. He can escape pressure in the pocket. So this will be a great challenge for Bradley Chubb, Andrew Van Ginkle, Zach Sealer, Christian Wilkins, everybody. Emmanuel Agba, if he's the guy that we see in Jalen Phillips' absence, whoever it is, I want to see at least three sacks on Sam Howell. Remember, last week the Dolphins had seven sacks, but that was the Jets' offense. So does it really count? Eh, it's still impressive. All right, last but certainly not least, you knew it was coming. And football guy me, I say it every single week. I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. You got to win the turnover battle. But, Jake, they've won the games without winning the turbo. turnover battle. I know, it drives me crazy. It is what it is. I want to see the Dolphins win the turnover battle. And, yeah, call me selfish. Call me whatever it is. I'll flip this table over if they lose the turnover battle on Sunday because this is crazy. I, I, I checked this stat four times, five times, six times, just to make sure it was correct. But in the last eight games, the Dolphins have won the turnover battle just once. That is crazy. It's mind-blowing crazy, the fact that they're able to win these games without winning the turnover battle. And I just don't think that's a sustainable recipe for success moving forward, especially as you start to play better teams down the stretch and obviously into the playoffs. So stop building that habit of losing the turnover battle but still winning the game. It ends in Week 13 against the Commanders. The Dolphins need to win the turnover battle. Now, I told you I'd give you a game score prediction at the very end, so thanks for making it through and getting to this point. I've got 27-13. I think kind of a conservative guess here. I'd love to be proven wrong and love to see the Dolphins put up 42 points and the Commanders put up three, but I think the Dolphins can cover that nine-and-a-half-point spread on the road, and I'm looking forward to seeing a clean game, a clean game. If nothing else, stop turning the ball over to it, and the offense for that matter. I'm gonna, My hair is going to go gray. Maybe I'll go bald, whatever it is, but I know they're capable of it. Now let's see it on Sunday. So that's going to do it for this edition of Dolphins Today. I hope you enjoyed our preview of Dolphins and Commanders. 
as always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hey, you like what you see? We do this every single day. Daily Dolphins content. We'll have our live show on Wednesday and, of course, a live watch party on Sunday for Dolphins versus Commanders. Shout out producer Coop on the ones and twos. Always a pleasure working with the one and only Coop. And that's going to do it for me. So, hey, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time on Dolphins Today.